Hello! Welcome to Gold Coast School's Real Estate Math Made Simple series. Today's topic is amortizing loan payments. We're going to help you understand the math behind amortizing loan payments by making what we like to call a PIP sandwich. We're going to break it down into easy to remember steps. This method will make it easy for you to solve amortization problems on your state licensing exam. You may be thinking, what is an amortized loan anyway? Very simply put, an amortized loan is a loan that is paid off over a period of time through scheduled loan payments. A typical mortgage loan is amortized over 15 to 30 years, with monthly payments that are always the same amount. The amount that is owed is the loan balance and is referred to as the principal. The principal at the start of the loan is the total amount that was borrowed. So what does it mean to amortize a loan? The word amortize comes from the Latin word amorte, which literally means to kill. With an amortized loan, the borrower kills a portion of the principal, or loan balance, every time they make a loan payment. Every payment reduces the loan balance. When the final payment is made, the loan is paid off and the principal is zero. So how do lenders make money? Very simply, lenders charge the borrower for the use of their money. This is called interest. The interest paid is an agreed upon percentage of the loan balance. Interest is paid over the life of the loan as a part of every loan payment. So, now that we've reviewed the basics, let's talk about that PIP sandwich. Our sandwich is made of two pieces of bread with pip in the middle. We use a pip sandwich as a way to help remember the steps to calculate the effect of monthly payments, interest, and principal for an amortized loan. The bread in our pip sandwich represents the loan balance. B for bread, B for balance. We will see that the top piece of bread is the starting or old balance, and the bottom piece of bread is the ending or new balance. The middle, or PIP, part of the sandwich contains three things. P for payment, I for interest, and P for principal. You can remember that the P for payment comes first because payment comes earlier when alphabetized than principal. The other important thing to know about the PIP part of the sandwich is that the payment is made up of two parts, the interest part and the principal part. Written mathematically, this means that the payment is equal to interest plus principal. The principal is the only part of the payment that actually goes towards reducing the amount owed. Now, let's take a look at a scenario where we can use the PIP sandwich to solve an amortization problem. Pat takes a 30-year, $100,000 mortgage loan with fixed monthly payments of $477.42 each and an interest rate of 4%. We want to know the balance of the loan after three payments. We start building the PIP sandwich by filling in what we already know. The initial loan is for $100,000, so that is the starting balance at the beginning of the first month. That's the top piece of bread. We know that the monthly payments are always the same, $477.42. So we can add that information now for all three months. It isn't going to change. Next, we're going to build our PIP sandwich month by month in three simple steps, starting with the first month. Step one, find the interest part of the monthly payment. Number two, Use the interest part to find the principal part of the monthly payment. Remember, each monthly payment consists of two parts, the interest part and the principal part. Step three, reduce the loan balance by the principal amount paid. Let's begin with step one, find the interest part of the monthly payment. There's a simple formula for finding the interest, I equal P times R times T. It stands for interest equal principal times rate times time. Interest is what we're looking for. Principal is the loan balance. At the beginning of the first month, the balance is the same as the amount borrowed, $100,000. Rate is the interest rate. 
the interest rate for this loan is 4%, which is 4 divided by 100, or 0 0.04. Time is represented as a fraction of a year. We are working one month at a time. One month is one twelfth of a year. Here's a tip. Multiplying by one twelfth is the same as dividing by twelve, so we can rewrite the problem without the fraction. To avoid rounding error, it's a good idea to enter the values in your calculator just as written. 100,000 times 0 .04 divided by 12, then press equals. After doing the math, we find that the interest part of the first month's payment is $333.33. In step 2, we subtract that interest part from the monthly payment to find the principal part of the payment. $477.42 minus $333.33 for the interest part equals $144.09 for the principal part of the payment. The principal part is the amount that the loan balance will be reduced. In step 3, we subtract that principal part from the old balance, the top piece of bread, at the beginning of the month to find the new balance, the bottom piece of bread, at the end of the month. $100,000 minus $144.09 is $99,855.91. After building month one of our PIP sandwich, we find that the first monthly payment reduced the loan balance to $99,855.91. The interest portion belongs to the lender. Month 1 is done, so now we repeat the PIP sandwich steps for the second month. We start by copying the reduced month 1 balance, the bottom piece of bread, to the top piece of bread for month 2. That will be the starting balance. Let's do step 1, find the new interest part of the payment. Remember, I equals P times R times T. Notice that the only thing that changed is the principal, or loan balance. Substituting that loan balance, we have that the interest is equal to $99,855.91 times 0 .04 divided by 12. Doing the math, we find that the interest part of the second month's payment is $332.85. Notice that the interest is slightly lower than the previous month. As the loan balance goes down, a smaller and smaller part of the loan payment is charged to interest. The faster the borrower can pay down the principal, the less interest they will pay over the life of the loan. For step two, we find the principal amount of the payment. $477.42 minus the interest part is equal to $144.57. That will be applied to reduce the loan balance. Notice that this is slightly higher than the amount that was applied for the first month. As the interest part of the payment goes down, it leaves more of the monthly payment to apply against the principal. Finally, step three, find the new loan balance, the bottom piece of bread. We take the loan balance, $99,855.91, and subtract the principal part of the payment, which is $144.57, for the new loan balance, which is $99,711.34. That becomes our bottom piece of bread for month two. This is the new loan balance, or principal, after the second monthly payment. We're almost there. We need to repeat the process one more time for the third month to find the balance at the end of the third payment. Start by copying the new loan balance from the second month, the bottom piece of bread, as the beginning balance for the third month, the top piece of bread. Step one, we're going to find the new interest part of the payment using the new principal value. I equals P times R times T, which gives us an interest of $99,711.34 times 0 .04 divided by 12. We find that the interest part of the third month's payment is $332.37, which is less than in the previous month. Step 2. Find the principal amount of the payment. We do the subtraction, 
and find that $145.05 is what will be applied to reduce the loan balance. This will reduce the principal balance slightly more than in the previous month. Step 3. Find the new loan balance. $99,711.34 minus the principal part of the payment, which is $145.05, gives us our new loan balance of $99,566.29. This is the new loan balance, or principal, after the third monthly payment, which was what we were trying to find. So let's do a quick summary of what we've learned. An amortized loan is a loan that is paid off over a period of time through monthly payments. Each payment includes a principal amount that reduces the loan balance, or principal, and an interest amount that is paid to the lender. The loan balance is called the principal. The initial loan balance, or principal, is the total amount borrowed. We use a PIP sandwich as a memory aid to help do the math steps needed to find the interest and principal parts of the payment and the new loan balance after the payment is made. The sandwich consists of two pieces of bread, B for bread, B for balance. The top piece of bread is the loan balance before the payment. The bottom piece of bread is the loan balance after the loan payment. PIP is the inside of the sandwich, P for payment, I for interest, and P for principal. When using the PIP sandwich, always work from the top to the bottom of the sandwich. Start by filling in what you know, the balance before the payment and the amount of the payment. You fill in the rest of the sandwich in three easy steps. Step 1. Find the interest part of the monthly payment using the I equals P times R times T formula, where P is the principal, or loan balance, R is the interest rate, and T is the time in years. Step 2. Find the principal part of the payment by subtracting the interest part from the payment amount. Step 3. Find the new loan balance by subtracting the principal part from the balance before the payment. Repeat the PIP sandwich steps for as many months as needed, using the previous new balance as the starting balance in each month. We hope this approach will be helpful to you in solving loan amortization math problems. Gold Coast students have been using PIP sandwiches for years to help them on their real estate exams. For more information, please call any of our helpful career counselors at 1-800-732-9140 or visit our website at www.goldcoastschools.com.